Hello, hello everyone. I am uh, just getting started. So just basically set up a few materials and things here on the side. Um, I'm trying to just get the, the chats uh, so that they appear a little bit better on my screen. At the moment, I can only see one of the one of the windows. Um, so just a quick sound check. If if um, anyone out there is watching, just let me know in the comments if you can hear if the audio is all good. I've got the microphone pretty much right next to me this time. I know uh, some few people last time were saying um, it was a bit difficult to, to hear. So I hope this is a, a little better. Um, but uh, welcome to this live. Uh, today what I'm going to do is we're going to go through a couple of different scenes. So um, the first scene basically is uh, this scene here uh, that I found. I basically found this um, picture from Pixabay. It's a nice, um, I'm not sure which area in China it is, but it's a, it's a couple of pagodas. Um, one at the back, I think the other one at the left. These are just shops to the left and right. But I thought this was a nice, busy little scene um, to basically practice some line and wash sketching. And I know it's Inktober at the moment, and you know, this is a pretty challenging sort of scene to do. But um, one of the great things when you're learning using one of these more uh, challenging reference photos is basically, you know, you, 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 you learn how to draw and paint all, you know, a whole variety of shapes and figures. So rather than focus just on one thing, you've got, you, you, you're able to get in a lot of practice in here so and just because it's in there doesn't mean you have to draw it in as well you can sort of uh, pick and choose what you add and, and what you don't so um okay fantastic so i think um so marianne S levy says it's good fantastic and we've got Sh uh, sherry or sherry sherry thomas fantastic um so the reference photos i've actually put them in the the uh, discussion section on Facebook, or, or there's actually a link as well in uh, on YouTube if you're watching along, so you can have a look at that later. And I thought this would be a nice, a fun little, um, nice fun little uh, one to do. So roll up the sleeves, roll up the little sleeves, and when you get them, um, I've already got paint on one of them. Yeah. So hi Doris, how are you going? Um, I hope you're going okay. Uh, well, obviously, it must be going okay since last time. I know you said there was a bit of a hurricane situation over there, so good to good to see you back again, Doris. And um, I really like your your last rendition of the Annecy scene as well. Um, beautiful. You're just able to get in such. Um, if, if you've got more of a, a, I guess, a detailed style and um, interesting. So. Mona, Mona Lundston says, I can hear you fine. Fantastic, um, fantastic Mona. And uh, hope you also had a chance to take, um, yeah, have a look at that reference photo as well before today. Um, I know you were asking me about that. So I've got this little sketchbook here. Now I've made this sketchbook and it's created just from sheets of um, watercolor paper that I tore down. Um, so I'm going to be using the back side of this sheet today. Um, I usually paint front and back of these sheets. This is a little bit smoother, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, it may turn out a little bit differently. The front of the sheet's a little bit rougher. Um, people always ask, you know, can you paint on the both sides of the um, of the sh of the paper? And you can. So it's just that I think with most brands, they do have different textures on both sides. So we'll see how we go with this one. Um, if it works out, I'll continue using it um, for the next one, but let's give it a, a shot. So for this workshop, this little uh, sketch along workshop, um, you're going to need just a, just one pen basically. So I've got a 0 0.7 Uniball eye pen. It's just a ballpoint ink pen. The ink is a liquid permanent ink. You can also have a you know, 0 0.5 that works as well. Um, try to get something a little bit, little bit thicker. It just, um, I find that those nowadays I'm, I'm leaning towards sort of slightly thicker ones for these scenes because they're a bit more versatile. You can also scratch in smaller, thinner, fainter lines kind of by just turning the, 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 the pen on its edge a little bit. Um, but I really like these in general for just getting in a nice solid outline of whatever you're trying to draw in. So, um, 
guys, I'm going to get started now. And uh, just, you know, just a reminder, if you have any questions and, um, you know, anything, uh, yeah, just basically any questions or you're having a bit of trouble, um, feel free to uh, basically stop me and ask um, if you need a bit of help. So I'm going to go ahead now and, and get started. So we'll start off with this uh, first scene here on the right-hand corner. I'm just going to bring up my reference photo so that I can take a little peek of what's, um, of what's going on as well. And uh, Doris, Hong Kong is having a number eight typhoon again. It's no good. Um, stay safe. And um, yeah, probably stay indoors. <laughs> We don't have anything really like that over here in Australia. I think, well, unless you're out up north, but um, nothing like that in Melbourne, um, except for earthquakes. So I'm going to continue along. And first thing I want to do is um, we are going to put in a little indication here of the vanishing point okay just where if we look at that pagoda right in the distance there it's kind of faint here in the distance we're basically just um going to draw a line underneath now in the reference photo you can see it ends about halfway uh, more than halfway down the page about a third of the way down the page so we can sort of put it in round about here um morning Natalie good to see you again as we've got Natalie from uh, Malta joining joining along Fantastic. And what we'll do is, again, let's just start with scratching in that little line. Now, we want to be pretty faint with this line as well. I'm just going to turn the pen on the edge, like what I'm doing here, just slightly on the edge, um, so that you get a faint kind of line like that. I've actually made my horizon line a little bit, um, the vanishing point almost too short, uh, too far down the page. I'm just correcting that now. You know, there is a line underneath there, but, you know, you'll find out later that, um, you, you know, if you're going to correct anything, just ignore it and draw where the line is um, supposed to go. A little indication there. This is this just serves as a divider. It's a very similar way, um, very similar sort of way that I, um, that I do it. So once you've got in this, uh, basically once you've got in this line, what you want to do is um, start looking at some of the figures and people down the, the front of the page. So we've got this guy here in the bicycle, really like um, this figure here in the front. So I'm going to start off, let's do a bit of a, a sketch of this person. Now we know the head is kind of here on just where the horizon line is. So just around about here, I'm going to put the head in kind of like a squarish sort of uh, shape. And we've got um, Rossell, Rossell Rohan here. Good to see you, Rossell. And um, thanks for posting my, my page up there as well. So um, Doris and Doris saying, the best thing to do is painting under a typhoon. <laughs> yeah, I guess anything that you can do indoors, cooking, um, painting, uh, watching movies. Yeah. So I hope this keeps you, I hope this keeps you occupied. So we're going to get this guy, this guy here in the bicycle. I really like this, this fella. So, um, and in a bit of the shirt, a bit of his collar, he's kind of heads turned a little bit to the left there. I'm going to put in, you know, a little bit, some eyebrows and like a, a nose there. Something very basic, a bit of his mouth. Um, and then we've got the hair, which just kind of comes off out like that. Just something, just something like that. Um, and we're going to get in the shirt like this and uh, you know what I like to do is I hold the pen sort of near the end as well it's just creates a looser sort of look so shoulders okay drawing up those shoulders and um, what we do have is we have his arms kind of coming down the front like this and the folds of his shirt and then it kind of stops around about here um, same with the other one so the sort of um, rolled up sleeves kind of effect that we got here so I'm going to just Draw in that side of his sleeve. We've got another on a side of this side of the sleeve as well, like that. Um, you know, let's get a bit of that shirt coming down like this as well. And then of course we are gonna go put in the hands. So there's one one um, hand there, something like that, something like that. There, and he's holding the handlebars of the bicycle. Um, it's kind of hard to see what exactly what exactly is going on here 
Um, but, you know, we've definitely got some kind of handlebar here. You can always zoom in a bit closer if you're having, um, if you're having issues as well, seeing what's, what's going on. Underneath the handlebar, we've got um, this kind of rectangular shape. Just think of it as a rectangular shape. It's a basket, basically. Um, it's got a basket here in the front. And underneath the basket, we basically got the wheel. So I'm having a look at how large I want to make this wheel. So let's, um, the wheel was around about, it kind of finishes around about here. So we come down the page, sort of like a shape like this. I've made this figure like a lot larger as well. I've changed him up a bit. It's not exactly how the reference looks. Um, so we got that wheel, that front wheel touching the ground, just like that. And uh, look, what, what else do we have to put in? There is a second wheel behind as well. So I'm gonna go, let's put in a smaller sort of wheel um, behind, it's barely visible. And then we've got his legs kind of jutting out the side like this, um, underneath there. And um, what have we got here? We've got a bit of a, a foot or something like that there. Um, Kind of thinking this this bicycle now is just a bit small. I'm just thinking I might expand, just um, enlarge in that wheel a bit. Well, um, okay, and I'll just get in the legs behind something like that. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, looks like he's he's uh, sitting up the top here, bike. Okay. Um, so that's one figure. Now, I like to put in a, a lot of figures in these scenes, um, especially because we've got a lot going on. There's a lady here with a, a kind of bag that just hangs down like this. So I'm going to catch in a bit of a bag like that. Um, shoulders and a shirt there. And then we've got um, an arm kind of extending downwards like this. There, a hand. And then, of course, we've got legs. So we've got one leg sort of out the side there the other one kind of um bent at the knee and a uh, little little bit further behind so got that foot kind of on an angle like that and this one's um more touching the ground like this okay so there we go um figure in like that might actually start putting in maybe um maybe some shorts or something this figure, some shorts, that would be nice. Um, area there for the, the top of the, the collar. Um, let's have a look. Let's let's put in this orange beanie she's wearing. That's all it takes, just a little line, little line coming down like that. So she's got a, got a bag and she's got this sort of um, thing in the front here, this little uh, satchel. And we can continue along, and it's really up to you what you want to put in here. I mean, for this side, there's a guy who's got his head sort of turned over, looking to the left a bit, like that. And, um, and again, you can start scratching in a bit of detail for the shirt that he's wearing, um, something like that. Um, oops, one arm there. We've got one arm coming over here. Um, and carrying some sort of bag, okay, some sort of, he's got like a shopping bag or something like that there. Um, okay, then we can put in just the wear his shirt finishes and the legs. On the legs to be really uh, quite important to just uh, anchor the figures down on the ground. So one there, we've got one here. Um, this one hasn't been done all too well, but you can sort of, you get the idea. Um, so a few more figures. Let's get another a few overlapping here. So we've got some heads just sort of up here in the distance. Uh, maybe one here as well. You know, we've got someone maybe kind of reaching over with his hand, um, scratching his head or something like that on this side. And um, there we go, part of the shirt. And having these figures also overlap. Um, really makes things look interesting and here we've you know for example we've got this bag then we've got this figure in the background there just overlapping like that so there we go there's a figure in the background 
Um, maybe we've got one here. This uh, one with that shirt, and another leg there, and another leg here. Look at that. There we go. Another one here, and one just following closely behind. We'll put in a bit of hair for some of them as well, like that. Uh, kind of getting them to just join together that we've got some variation of, you know, variation of all these figures. You know, these two could be walking together, could be friends. That bring down this person's shirt a little bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you might, might be wondering why am I uh, putting in all uh, all of these sh um, figures first? So basically, um, basically you, you want to make sure you've got the figures in the front first because once we uh, start doing all the figures in the background, it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, sorry, I mean all the, the buildings and things in the background. It's going to be a lot easier once we have some uh, activity going on down the front. So. If you're here, if, uh, if you're watching along, um, please say hi. Uh, just um, let me know where about you're you're watching from. I'd love to love to see. Um, yeah, just love to hear from you and um, and uh, where you're up to as well in terms of um, in terms of the drawing and and uh, we'll go from there. So I I've done a few. I've done a few little figures. One thing I, I think we are kind of missing is one of like a larger figure. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw maybe a larger one coming in here from the right. So I'm going to making this one up, just a larger sort of head. Now this one probably is going to go out of the scene. Maybe they were walking in like that, right? So just a, a bit of that going on there. Maybe a bit of the arm outstretched towards the back there. Hand by, by their side. Um, and there we go. Bottom of that shirt like this. and Go ahead again. Let's put in some bits and pieces. So we've got a couple of legs like this. Okay. And you see the legs start to come out of the scene. That's okay. Just make sure their heads all line up because that's going to imply a flat, um, flat area, flat terrain. Okay. So, you know, we might even think of getting a, a bag or something coming through here, like holding on. She could be holding on. Do a bag. Let me just get some hair. You can always the hair and stuff. We can always get that in later anyway with um with the watercolor. Okay. Um, it's Sheree. Uh, Sh Sh sorry, if I've got your name wrong. Uh, Sh is it Sheree or Sh uh, Sherry? But um, she says it's. I'm in sunny Scotland, UK. Fantastic. And um, starting to warm up a lot over here as well. We aren't really. Allowed to do much in Melbourne. We're still under lockdown, so hopefully things get a bit better. Um, but it's good to hear. Good to hear things are nice weather over there. Uh, so yeah, we can really just keep on going. And I, I, I want to be careful about this because um, there is a sense you can overdo it. So I might leave a gap kind of here in the middle. And there's a, a person here kind of walking with their... A man here walking with his daughter. Just get in some little detail there of this 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 man. And um there we go. Uh, running that sort of arm running down the side like that. There and the shirt finishes off. The leg here, and then one leg kind of going behind. Um with this leg here coming towards the front like that. There, and then the second leg um, more towards the back there. So it's something like that. Pretty simple. Um, that bit of hair. in a bit of hair. And a bit of hair for this, this fella as well. Like that. Okay, we've also got um, a bit of, you know, bits and pieces here. We've got a, a, a bike, actually, a couple of bikes here. So... First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just a way to get in this general, these general perspective lines here on the uh, vanishing point or the horizon line, just where the, the building is going to touch the ground. I put in a little dot. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to draw a few very, very faint lines. Um, 
going out from this dot. So um, something like this. Okay. Turn around. Button through some of the legs of these figures like that. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. This is going to help give it a slightly more three-dimensional look, and we can also do things like add bricks and things on the ground as well. Um, just over here, we can pick a point essentially where there is a little, it's a kind of step that runs up. You can barely see it, but there is a step here that runs up. Um, so I'm going to put that in this, this step. There, there is also a bike here, which we can, um, you know, just do a quick little indication there of a wheel. Like that um, spokes hanging off the sides like that. We've got a basket here. Just scribble that in real quick. Um, handlebars that go up like that, and then we've got handles here, there. Um, in a moment. Some guy in the comments, I've just got to get rid of the... Got to get rid of those, so just be careful guys, don't click on this uh, person in the comments posting a fake link, so I've just got to get rid of get rid of their comments. Right. It's been a bit of an issue last time as well. Um, especially on weekends where we get a few more sort of viewers, um, people will sometimes uh, paste some kind of fake link in there or try to lead you off, the, you know. So I'm just going to try to delete this person's um, details. For some reason, I just can't get rid of all of them. I'm able to block them. Okay. Me one moment, guys. Okay. All right. I don't think there's a there's a way for me to block them, but I've been able to um remove those comments. That's all right. Um, sorry about that. Let's let's go ahead and and get started again. Uh. Bring this link over. Um, Lynn, so there's a uh, comment from Lynn uh, Coltua. These are wonderful tutorials, but I need a more simple drawing. I guess I have to tackle my drawing skills. Yeah, the the um, I guess um, with the scenes that I've been choosing lately, there's they are they are quite busy, and I have had some of that that feedback as well. So. Perhaps what I can try for next time, I've already picked the ones for next week, but maybe that the ones for next time we can go through and do some that are, uh, maybe I could choose one that's more simple and um, a second one that's a bit more a bit more complex. I kind of use these ones as well to sort of, um, yeah, just to just to um, sharpen up my, my skills and try something a, a bit different. So... Um, it's always good to to try to challenge yourself and um, give it a go. But I know this is, you know, this is this is quite a busy looking scene. So, um, you know, if if you get the chance, um, definitely you know give it a try. What I'm also aiming to do a lot of the time is just to simplify things, simplify things down, and change around what's um, what's in the scene. So, um, it's just a way to practice things like drawing a bike. You know, we've got. Even here, something like, uh, what is it called? These are pot plants or something over here. So that's a way for me to practice these kind of shapes and um, keep myself busy and learning a few different um, ways to draw them in. So um, continue on and we'll start putting in a second one here, another this could be another pot plant here in the background. Um, there we go. That's a bit of a, a bit of greenery we can add in here. Um, 
another thing uh, that I'll, I'll do is just add in um, another figure, probably around about around about here as well. Have a look, walking in, sort of and start putting in just you know, little areas, um, marking the heads and things and things like that as well. Um, hey V, how you going? Uh, good to see good to see you again this week. And B says, if it's too hard, just leave out some of the characters and focus more on the buildings. Yeah, so um, what we're going to do is um, basically I'll show you how to simplify these buildings down um, just to make them a little bit more um, doable. But with that said, some of these do need to be a bit more um, detailed. So I'm going to start, just get at this sort of air of this line running up the side here. This could be the side of a building or something like that. Um, but we do have some areas here where we've got like a, a block there. Um, so we can just put in a little indication of that. Um, just a little block and we don't have to get in. There's a kind of pillar that goes over the top as well. Um, you can bring in, you know, there's a pillar just goes up. There's a lot of verticals here. And um, it's a lot of verticals, okay, going up. And we'll go through. And um, Cherie also says, I'd like something a bit more simple to only started painting slash drawing a few months ago, but this is great um, to watch to pick up tips. Yeah. Um, the, the Wednesdays ones, I, I tend to pick scenes that are that are more uh unconventional and um, a little bit more challenging also for myself so i can try something i've never painted these two references before i don't know if it's gonna i don't know if it's gonna work out i hope it does um but it's just also going through my thought process in terms of how do i how do i simplify this down because there's no way i'm going to draw all everything in here in you know half an hour or, or whatever um but that's a really good point sheree and lynn for next time, uh, I will um, pick something probably a bit easier for the first one I've done. If if um, you can have a look at some of the previous lives that I've done as well, and there are some in there where I've actually you know just added a house or something like that, which makes it a bit simpler. Um, just a one house kind of scene. So uh, there's a few few bits and pieces there that you can choose from to. Uh, so here we go. There's a guy here with a um, red jacket. I like that red jacket person here. So let's put their head in like that. Wearing glasses, sunglasses. Go. Okay. bit suspicious looking there. Um, yeah. Like that. Now, um, I'm going to have a look at this building, this whole chunk of buildings here in the background. And I'm going to start it roughly around about here. So right in the center of the, the page, kind of like mid uh, center right of the page, we've got where this uh, pagoda is. It starts around about here. Um, but we've got all this stuff um, basically coming off uh, the, the rooftops got little lanterns hanging around and what I want you to do is treat all of this as one big shape so I don't want to bother too much with all the details I'm practicing in getting in some of these um, rooftops and things like that but I'm just looking at things like here that that building right in the back right next to the pagoda it is a kind of a, a rectangular shape and we've got these sort of lines coming up like that I'm not even looking at them as uh, buildings that just to me um, essentially just uh, shapes and yeah, the interesting shapes as well and that one there um, we've got a lot of overlapping bits and pieces you know often what happens is that I, I can I actually leave out um, some areas too um, but what I really love in these are these red lanterns I, I find them um, I'm quite nice and to look at and kind of break up all this darkness that's in the building and you know I'm going to put in some of these here or some indications of them at least kind of just to to add in some you know just a bit of a bit of um, variation in shapes in here okay there's little signs for the shops um there's a lot going on in here there's a lot but 
that's it. I'm just looking at it as a as a, as one large sort of shape. Okay, and you've got areas here as well. So this is like a rooftop like that, and this is going to be um, you know darker as well. So we're going to have a few little lines running through there. Um, here, this area is going to be a little bit darker. So leaving bits of light and dark, but generally speaking, um, this whole area on the right is going to be dark. So got that one in. Let's get in another section like this. There's uh, some more lanterns. And remember, as we get closer, they um, the, the lanterns also get a bit bigger. So this is probably too big. Um, but that's okay. We can now uh, and make it up. Um, that's a rooftop like that there. And then we've got another building coming up this side there. But there we go. And just the last final building on this side there, just to all kinds of things on top of the roof. Lots of intricate sort of designs. But notice how this has all just come through in one really big shape. So um, some more, some more kind of lanterns and things. You know, look here's a few, few more that I'm just going to put in. You can add in even a few more details like that on the on the lantern too. Um, sometimes I do one of these sketches and they don't really work out. And um, the good thing is that you end up learning a lot from them. So it's not always um, a matter of trying to to um you, you know get a coherent piece out of the whole thing it's it just giving you an opportunity putting yourself out of your comfort zone and trying something that you think um just looks incredibly complicated but um in the process you actually learn quite a bit so i'm just going to bring this one down here there we go there's a lot of darkness and things in here, but the rooftops is, is that's where all the light is. Okay, so it's another rooftop over there. So these roofs here, we're going to leave them, uh, leave that light on top of the roofs. But pretty much everything else, um, pretty much everything else is going to be quite dark. It's just filled with shops and things inside as well. Um, a lot of vertical lines, bits and pieces, um, just running through here. So. of bits and pieces like that um oh, this pagoda here in the background um it's about time we get that one in so let's start here there's a kind of um got the kind of gate that just runs down like this there and it disappears off in the distance um and we got a couple of these so we basically got this rooftop here it runs like that something in the background as well um, got another one that runs out like that, kind of curves upwards there. Um, what have we got? We've got a few, um, got another area of darkness here, but we've also got some kind of poles and um, supporting poles and things. Someone's in there as well. Um, we've also got some dark sort of spots in there, which we, we can get in later with the watercolor. Um, but just want to get in um, the different floors. It looks like there's one, almost like one, two, you know, it's hard to say really. It's just a, just a, um, how many roofs? One, two, three roofs. So this is the second one. So that's the first, this is the second one here. And you know, something kind of curving upwards like that. There. Um, lots of scribble and stuff going on in here. The final bit which curves upwards like this kind of looks like a boat it's just a boat with a section a rectangle on top like this really all it is if you look at it it's just a boat uh, it's not really a boat but i kind of do that to simplify it down in my mind um you know underneath there's all this detail and, and what have you but i'm i'm just scribbling in bits and pieces. I'm looking, trying to look mainly at the areas of light and dark on here. Um, another thing as well is that you've got some of these lines running down the roofs like this, which I really want to um, get in. Just a few of these, that, there, we've got another one here. 
Um, let's have a look. How do we want to do this? Probably in the same section as well. A little bit lighter. Um, section here is just a bit of white space there. And then we've got a bit of darkness under there. So there we go. You know, something, something there that kind of resembles um, what we're trying to sort of draw. Um, so let's move a bit closer to the left hand uh, left hand side now and um, you know some of these buildings and things I, I do feel that I um, will need to emphasize more later on um, more more in the kind of watercolors and you know, even bits of patterns and things on top there's lots of complexity in here I'm just trying to to, to simplify it down as much as I can. But um, think of this all as one big shape, just mixed up with all these other shapes, with circles and things. But it's mainly if you just even draw a line from here to here and draw some triangles here for the roof, you can get a basic uh, kind of indication of what's, what's going on. So um, I might actually put in some larger lanterns um, over here on this side as well. A bit closer. I really love these lanterns. That's one of the reasons why I actually um, picked this one. I have one next to this person here in the, in the, what do you call it, in your shirt. Red jacket kind of thing. Um, now, again, we're going to simplify this whole area down. Um, how are we going to do that? What we're going to do is basically um, draw a straight line all the way up to around about here. Straight line. Keep it, keep it kind of loose though. Oops, even that's okay. We know that the um, it kind of finishes off. Look, it's more of an angle. It's more of an angle, kind of like this. Um, and it kind of finishes further up. On the scene like that kind of like a rooftop there okay and this is kind of the main shop front that we have there's that little um this person little boy or someone standing outside the the shop and um we can get in a bit of this detail like that and again this this forms um part of this uh you call it side of the road um path there and this side sort of um here so let's let's work on like the big shapes so we have some of these signs that we can just drop in a large sign like that there and we can get a large sign here that right hand side like that and there's a lantern here okay a lantern with a few of these little things stretching up um on the side, if we've even got a lantern running down the side here. Um, I haven't got it in exactly, but you know, I think just the indication of it should do the trick. I don't wanna I don't wanna spend too much time trying to indicate them because with the watercolors, uh, when we once we put in that lovely red, it's gonna look um, very much like a like a lantern. So we will go in and um, you know, here for example, we've got um, Few little things, a few little things, but um, let me just draw in a, a, few, a bunch of lines running towards that vanishing point here. A bunch of, a bunch of lines there. There we've got a line sort of hitting the end there. And that's where I can start doing things like we can put in a door, for example, here. We've got that line that runs all the way down to the vanishing point. Um, and so that I can follow that line down and get in that uh, kind of a door or something here, really large, really large door, um, or whatever you, you you want to to indicate in this sort of section. So look at that, just something simple like that. All they are, uh, if you think of this, is just we've got this big shape here, and we're just dividing it. We're just subdividing this shape up into smaller shapes, and both. In this section here as well. And we do have that that um always sort of standing here. Missed out one of the signs, but you know, 
we can put in another one. In fact, we can just put in a bunch of lanterns or something just running down. Um, you don't have to use um, and, and um, copy the reference exactly. It can all kind of be connected up. Um, the only thing is that we've got to make sure that the, the figures are, um, you know, as big as they should be. Now, this person is kind of standing on a step. It's a little bit kind of higher, maybe looking over and standing sideways as well. That. Yeah. And then we've got the legs come down like this, kind of just peering out. There's one, I've got a hand here on his hips. Just standing outside like that. A lot of the other lines and stuff coming down, they're just um, just vertical lines running through there. There's not really... Um, that's the only way that you can simplify this down. Uh, fantastic. So um, I will bring this roof actually a little bit further down the page like that. Um, a little bit more, a little bit more further. We've got a section of this rooftop that sort of sticks out like that. Um, that I'm going to bring down. Just dividing up this whole area um, in the background into just smaller shapes. You know, that's a little sign here. We've got a, another lantern here. Um, you know, for example, we've got a, a rooftop here that just runs down the side like that. And this is going to be pretty dark as well. Like that, um, comes in like that. And another part of a rooftop there that sort of runs across like that. Um, section that just runs down the page like this, sort of separation in the buildings. Um, we go, here we go. And you can barely see what's happening over here when we go um, off into the distance. It's, things just start to disappear. Um, but they do jut out of the sky just a little bit. So rather than it being completely straight, like what we were doing before, we're just doing a little bit of course correction here as we go. Okay, some more signs. All of this, they're just shapes. I'm just drawing in little shapes. I'm not even, not even thinking about um, whether it's a building or not. So um, continue on. And, you know, there's windows, a few windows and doors and things like that. I mean, this, for example, is it this here? We could just draw a line coming out and this could be an edge or something, an edge of this pillar running across. I just thought some, maybe some horizontal lines would work. Um, I'll try to turn that pen on the side, but this is going to, this is going to be fine. Just some light horizontal lines running like that um, there there um, bit of bit of mess bit of mess running running around through and I, I like to just add in you know bits of darkness here and there because it's all all pretty light in this whole section there's so much going on in here um, Fantastic. A um, few more bits and pieces running around in the background. Um, we're almost done. Almost done with the drawing. Um, I just want to get in some more of these round shapes to fill in this section here um, for the lanterns. Okay. Apart from that, we're pretty much all good to go. Um, there are areas of the ground as well where we do have little um bricks and things which you can um draw in just like this you pick out a few a few little bricks on the ground to to draw in um i do that at times i'm not going to draw in every single brick because that's going to give me a headache uh but just like this you know it helps to connect up what's going on here so you've got this bicycle and um see on the pavement um outline that bicycle a bit more also got a section here that's um like it's quite empty i'm tempted to put in a figure very tempted to put in a figure here should i do it should i do it though that's the question um should we just leave it i think i'll you know what i think i'll put one in and get them kind of 
similar to this figure here, walking into the scene. So that's the head. Um, I'm going to have most of the body to the left side because I, I want the, the cyclist to kind of be uh, a little bit separated out. So we, there we go. Got the body there. Um, maybe um, coming out the front like this and the back um, barely see. Something like that. And legs coming out of the scene. Okay. Something like this. Kind of walking into the scene. Um, he's a bit closer and he's a bit shorter than the cyclists as well. Okay. Put some hair onto the back of his head. Um, could also get in a, another one of these sling bags or what have you here. Okay. I think that looks all right. I've got a few, I've got enough, enough in here. Um, Good enough in here to to go by, uh, and, and it's quite abstract. A lot of the things that I've put in here, it's just um, it, it, you know, it looks complicated from a distance, but but if you simplify it down, it's just real basic circles and um, circles and and squares and triangles kind of thing. Tony, how are you going, Tony? Um, we got Tony Green here from the UK. Thanks for joining us. And um, how are you doing? Are you following along with this? Um, we just just tuned in, I suppose. I haven't drawn this one before, and it's always good to try new things. Um, we always tend to go back to what we're comfortable with. It's something that I I definitely do this myself, where you, know, you find a subject that you you know you can do well, and you end up repeating it all over and over again. And I've done this with Venice actually, and kind of know uh, all the different ways that I can draw and paint it. I mean, there's a few, you know, obviously there's more that I can learn from it, but um, I just wanted to try something a bit different. And you know, whether it works or not, who knows? Who knows? But um, I think good to give things a try. Okay, so that's um, pretty much done. Uh, the the drawing. I mean, I'm thinking what else I could put in here, and I'm out really out of ideas. Um, so the last thing I might just you know, for this whole section, it's just putting in some bricks and things here on the ground, really. But apart from that, I, I don't think there's anything else. Um, that I really, really, truly want to want to add on. Um, we just sort of keep scribbling away, but the main details are pretty much all already in here. Um, fantastic. We've got uh, Linda. Linda. Um, let me have a bring my head closer. Linda Canner from Florida Keys. Welcome, Linda. And um, Natalie says, "Amazing how easy it looks." <laughs> uh, I like the um it how easy it looks part <laughs> it it's more it takes time to recognize to train your brain to just recognize the shapes and look at the shapes and and also to persevere and continue to draw because you know there's a part around here where i'm just thinking it just it doesn't look like anything my brain's not registering it as a um as the scene that i really see in front of me so um, kind of got to push through. It's a bit like watercolors, but when you're drawing as loosely as I am, you're just figuring it out on the way. Often it doesn't look like much until you you really um, really get get into it. So something here about this guy's we'll have to deal with it. I think I've I've put the leg a bit the legs a bit funny. Um, it still looks like he's on the bike, but there's something something odd about his leg. Maybe I'll get a a shoe or something here. He almost looks too big for this bike, but um, I'm going to start painting. And uh, before I do, I'm just going to turn on the light. It's a bit dark. Uh, and you guys can see the page that I'm on, but uh, it's quite dark in my apartment, so I'll be back. Just hit daylight savings here in Melbourne, and um, 
Yeah, it's still it's still um, still got a bit of light. Seven twenty. Uh, let's have a look. Any any other chats? So we've got Lindsay Lindsay Bangay from Melbourne. Good to see you again, Lindsay. Um, and Mary Mary Ramora will do this pen and ink urban sketch again, Darren, and we'll add um and we'll add watercolor to it as well. Thanks. Fantastic. Um, so we're going to continue on. Um, let's do, let's get in some color into this whole mix. So bring my, bring my palette a little bit closer. Um, now, one thing I really want to do is get in some of this red and stuff here on the on the buildings. Um, so what I'll do first, uh, I'll go straight into the uh, buildings and let's just really get in some warm colors, some, some uh, yellow ochre. I'm going to use some of this here on the side of my palette. Just see if you can, if you guys can see. Yeah, you can see a bit of my palette there. Got a bit sort of squeezed out there. Um, so a bit of yellow ochre for the rooftops like that. And a bit of burnt sienna, tiny bit of burnt sienna up the top. And uh, just quickly dropped in like that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a bit of, you know, a lot of, a lot of just warm colors running through here. So I'm just wanting to put in a light wash of all this because later what we'll do is actually go through um, with a, a darker kind of shadow color um, over the left side of these buildings. Um, I've got some really nice red here. This is uh, pyral red, and I'm going to emphasize these lanterns. I'm just going to drop in the red like that. Okay, look at that. It's just, just a bit of red um, circling around, um, getting them in like that. Here, here, there's another there. And... You know, um, the good thing is that these will start to sort of melt in once I add in a bit more color um, around the edges. Um, but bits and pieces, little little red sections like that. There's even some yellow in the signs. So like some really bright kind of yellow here. Um, you know, a bit of yellow here. That's almost turned into orange now. A bit of yellow here. Um, why not? Let's put some yellow for this, guys. Uh, this guy's sort of shirt as well, like that. Um, okay, now I'm going to go in with a bit of neutral tint, neutral tint, and a bit of um, yellow ochre. And let's try and get in some of this darkness underneath. Okay, we're leaving the rooftops. This is a rooftop here, there's another rooftop here on that right hand side as well. Um, uh, just like that, we'll put in a bit more yellow ochre right over there as well. But my aim here is I just want it to blend. I want it to all blend in and and um, look like a, a fluid sort of area like this. But be careful that you that uh, you're leaving some of this the the red lanterns red, if that makes sense. You kind of um, Everything's running together. You can tell um, at the moment how all the bits and pieces are just um, running together like that. But you want to be careful that you're leaving some... See how I've left a bit of white here? But the white, it only looks white because I've left that bit of paper unpainted. And that allows you to, um, to, to, to basically uh, preserve some of that, that light in there. I'm going to do this all these regions here um even this there's a rooftop over on this side as well a bit of it's just this is just neutral tint guys it's nothing um nothing fancy you, you can use a bit of um blue as well get a little bit of um ultramarine that i've dropped in there and it allows you to uh, again just get in a, a bit of darkness um ultramarine plus um your other primaries so a bit of yellow a bit of red um okay dropping bits in um just having a look at the the chats so um let me have a, let me have a 
quick look at the chat. Um, Tony, you shouldn't see the back wheel so much the guy on the bike. Yeah, I, I um, I've drawn that back wheel in a little bit too big, but um, we'll, we'll uh, continue on. And sometimes it's uh, just sort of work as quick as I can. Um, but that's uh, a good, good observation. Painting with Myrtle, um, so beautiful. Thanks, thank you, and good to see you again. Um, and we've got also another comment. I'm I'm late, but I'm glad I'm still able to watch you paint this scene. Awesome. Um, good, good, uh, to, good of you to join. Happy that you're here. I'm a little bit tired today, guys. Um, I didn't get too much sleep last night, so if I'm a little bit off or not as um, not as quick on my feet. You'll know. But I'm trying to paint the lily scene with one, one, uh, one go basically. Keep it nice and fluid. Here we go. Just running down the page. Um, I'm fiddling a fair bit. Let's get some more yellow ochre into the ground. This is just a bit of yellow ochre plus um, a bit of uh, of lemon yellow. Okay. So the lemon yellow uh, just creates a little bit more, a uh, little bit more um, saturation, I'm trying to say, in colors. So saturation here, yeah, there. This is a bit of, this is a bit of Naples yellow. Um, Tony's asking, what time is it at your end? So, yeah, for us, it's uh, 7.30 p.m. So, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a decent time. And I know for some of you guys, it's probably an unholy hour. So, I'm glad that uh, those of you who are still up watching, um, it's good, good that you're here. I do other ones as well on the weekends. I try to change, do these ones as well as, um, you, you know, ones on the weekend, which are more kind of, uh, I guess in the evening for other people on the other side of the world um, as well. But, uh, yeah. V, so V's got a question um, about neutral tint. I bought Moon Glow, Daniel Smith, which granulates, and it will look bad on this. So what do you recommend I buy for neutral tint doing these washes? Um, Moon Glow can, can actually work. It's kind of a purplish color. Uh, you can add in a bit of, yeah, you can add in maybe like a, a little bit more blue in there. Um, another thing you can do as well is you can just mix up your three primaries, V. So if you've got a blue, a red, and a, if you've got a blue, red, and and a, a yellow, just mix those around. Um, and that will, that will turn out fine as well. Okay, so let's keep this, let's get this um, section done. Okay, a uh, bit of yellow here in the background here, a bit of new, uh, sorry, a bit of um, yellow ochre. Kind of getting this gold kind of look there in the background uh, for the pagoda. I think it's a pagoda. It might not be actually. <laughs> now that I look at it a bit closer. Um, morning, Yvonne. How you doing? Good to see you again. It's probably very early for you as usual. Uh, Mona, for me, it's in the middle of the night on weekends. I'm from Finland. Okay, so it's uh, it, uh, hopefully middle of the night, like it, not too late for you, maybe like eight, nine o'clock, or is it, um, yeah. So it's, so, it's it's really cool that we've got people just watching from all, all around. Um, appreciate you being here. And let's move this. This is just yellow ochre. Let's move some of it over here, yeah? Um, onto the buildings here. Well, most of this is going to be yellow ochre. And then I'm going to drop in maybe some red, little bits of red here for the lanterns, uh, especially these ones that are closer. Um, I'm going quite strong with them, just a bit heavier with that red. And it, the red tends to look a bit, um, it looks very saturated under, the, under this uh, camera as well. So 
it, it is pretty saturated, but it isn't that um, it isn't that saturated really when I'm looking at it here in person. Um, getting some some of these like signs. I'm just looking at it. Just look at it as basically um, some colors. That's all I'm. That's all I'm uh, putting in. Just light and dark, warm and cool colors. Okay. Um, v uh, V saying, okay, this granulation is too heavy. I'll wipe it. Yeah, um, granulation. I I really love granulation. Actually, it's it, but it is a you know it, it is a personal thing. It's a personal thing because for some people it just looks a bit um a bit too much, and people prefer smoother sort of washes. Um, I, I don't mind granulation, especially in the sky. So it just depends. It just depends what sort of uh, what you're looking for in the day. In the, you can even get in some blue, a little bit of cooler blue color here on that side. Um, I'm really taking a long time to paint this, and I'm not I'm happy with how long I'm taking because um, I want to keep it looking fresh. Okay, so here we go. A bit more, a bit more of this yellow ochre running down the side. Um, there is a tree here which I can put in a bit of green. You know, here's a different color, a bit of green in there. We can also pick up some burnt sienna drop that in here as well like that there yeah um really in this section it's just going to be yellow ochre because look the main thing is just getting a quick wash over this section quick wash of color we don't want to worry too much about the shadows just yet i know i've said i said that i've put some dark bits over in this side um but generally speaking, we want a really soft wash over everything. So the sky area, um, I'm going to get some blue, a little bit of blue. Just drop that straight into the sky like that. This is, um, what is this? This is uh, manganese blue hue. Manganese blue hue. Just going to drop a light wash of that into the sky. It's kind of a bit grayish actually so i'm gonna see if i can just mix in a bit of that neutral tint in there as well um another trick that you can do is you can use a little bit of white gouache um and using that white gouache it kind of um adds a kind of a opaque sort of quality and uh, into the into the area that you're painting so that's what i'm what i'm trying to do let's just do that and you know if some of this hasn't dried yet even better um, because I, I do want it, a lot of it to mix into the sky. This is a little bit late for that right-hand side. A bit late for that right-hand side, but um, do okay. A bit more blue in there. Um, this, that, um, a bit more of this. Uh, I put a bit of white gouache, tiny bit of white gouache, in that section. Okay, like that. Yeah, mix into the mix into these um, houses a little bit, shops, whatever you call them. Um, fantastic. We've got um, we've got Ranji, uh, sorry, Regini Ramathan. Live, hello from Singapore. How are you going, Regini? And uh, and and welcome. Is this your first time here, or have you been to some of my my previous ones as well? Okay. Um, continue on. Tony says, uh, I think your paper affects granulation a lot. Yeah, so I, I find if you've got, um, well, for me anyway, like the, you know, uh, rougher paper, you can see those granulation effects a bit more. Even here, you, you're seeing the paint start to granulate um, slightly there over here as well. So I'm going to leave that. And um, But all the paints I've got, um, most of the paints that I'm using at the moment are non-granulating, uh, non-granulating paints. So they, um, yeah, they basically are more likely to sort of just dry with a, like this cerulean blue here that I'm using, this is non-granulating. So, um, I find no matter what paper I, I use it on, very hard to get that effect. Whereas that manganese blue hue, um, you get this sort of effect here this weird textured granulation effect really uh, up to your uh, really just a preference 
some people like it, some people hate it. Um, bit of color there. I'm just just looking for areas where we can drop in some color. Now I have to color everything in as well, guys. Now I'm I'm doing it a fair bit, but for example, we can leave the white of this person's shirt. Um, and even leave a bit of that white for the the pants um, of that person as well. But for this one to the right, I'm going to darken the pants. Okay, so that we've just got a, a, a you know a bit of a variation in between here. So we've got white, this so light tone, then it goes dark. Find that helps. So really at this point, I find the the um, less thinking I do in putting in these colors, the better. Otherwise, I tend to go overboard but I do want these colors uh, maybe a bit of warmth here for this guy on the bike a um, bit of color there for the basket and the legs here cut the wheels um, like that Fantastic. and Regini yes my first time here loving it thank you great and um, good to good to see you good to see you here I'm happy you found happy you found my um, a little stream. Uh, oh, I think that's too. That's too much. I'm going to get a bit of blue in this figure. A little bit of blue. Maybe a bit of blue for this figure here. Walking. Order. I here in like a maybe put an orange top or something like that. There. Okay. But as you can see, it's just colors. I'm just putting colors in here because um, the shadows, we're going to deal with the shadows later and get some sharper ones running across down into this scene. Um, even across in here, I'm going to darken behind these figures, um, get a bit more definition in um, and bring this whole piece essentially together. So um, if you're up to where I, I'm at at the moment. Um, what I want you to do is um, basically just to dry off that paper. Um, you can, if you've got a, if you've got yourself a um, a bit of, sorry, if you've got yourself a a hair dryer, that's a good little trick. I'm, I use them all the time these days. Uh, it just speeds up, really speeds up that process. Here you can just drop in a bit of color. I've used a bit of um, pyro red. I've also got a bit of burnt sienna, so you can drop. Bit of bits of colors in for the faces of these figures and also the hands and um, just little sporadic touches here and there like that okay that's all you need um, just getting some color in okay so we're going to give this all a really quick dry and I will come back if you have any questions Put them in the chats we'd love to hear from you and especially if it's your first time here or um or if you've you know if you're watching watching from uh, the last couple of sessions as well love to hear from you but uh, give me one moment i'll just dry this off Alrighty, so we're we're back now. I'm going to show you how to put in all the darks and finish this one off, all the shadows, uh, relatively quickly. I've got a, a message, a chat message from Philip Stroll. Now, Philip says, yet again, another fabulous live. I hate to say it, but it's 3.35 a.m. here, and as much as I want to hang around, I have to catch up when it's uploaded. You're amazing, and we appreciate you very much. Don't ever change. <laughs> um Thanks so much for your support, Philip. And I think it'd be hard for me to change even if I wanted to. So, um, yeah, I think you're going to need to get some sleep. That's more important. So these will always be up 
on the YouTube page and on Facebook. So um, you can always watch along later. Hopefully I can find a time that's more suitable for you. Um, Philip, I believe um, probably, yeah, it's later in the, yeah, probably, I don't know. I'd have to look up the time zones and things like that. But um, thank you for, for coming along. Now, for this last part, we're going to be using um, a smaller brush. This is a number six round brush. I've also got a number eight round brush um, to put in the shadows. And hopefully we're going to make everything pop out. The shadows are just going to bring out the light. At the moment, it just looks all um, wishy-washy. It's just um, colors. It's very flat. So uh, we'll put in the... We'll put in the uh, put in the shadows and and let's go from there. Um, and V V says it. Oh, it's four thirty a.m. Four thirty a.m. Jeez. Um, might have to go. I did go to bed early last night, fortunately. Right. Um, well, thanks a lot for for staying up, V. It's very it's very early. I'd probably be sleeping if I were you, but um, really appreciate you being here and. And I uh, hope you're learning lots. Just uh, yeah, just ask me any questions um, that that you have. I try to these ones I do just after work for me here in, in Melbourne. So they it just it's a it's a perfect time because um, yes, let's continue, guys. Anna um, Anna says thank you. Anna Lama Lamadua, thank you for the tutorial. Um, you're welcome, Anna, and thanks for coming along. Okay, um, now. Looking at the reference picture, I want to I want to just go through a quick exercise with you guys, and I want you to identify um, which areas are the shadows, the kind of dark areas. And basically, what I see when I'm looking at the reference picture is we, we see a light source from the right. So we know there's a light source coming in from the right because we call these shadows on the ground, okay, of all the rooftops and things. And essentially, we've got. Um, We've got darkness underneath these buildings behind um, the lanterns. We've got darkness also underneath um, these sections of this, the, the rooftop um, pagoda. Oh, I don't know what it is. I think it's a pagoda. Yeah, and then the background, little bits and pieces of shadow underneath the tops of these buildings as well. Some of the pillars running down, but most of the shadows are running over to the right. And then also we've got the shadows of the guy on the bicycle. So it could be a bit of, um, bit of, bit of a shadow running to the left here as well for everyone else. So... Now, with that said, we're going to continue along, um, and let's uh, just have a quick look at the chats. Um, Valerie, um, Valerie's just got up, and uh, don't mind, I just can't use a blow dryer this early or wake everyone up. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a, it's a, it's an all right time for me over here, so no one's going to worry. Can do my vacuum cleaning. Not at the, yeah, at a nice, nicer time and blow drying. So let's go ahead and do this, and we're going to simplify this down. I'm going to grab some neutral tint, okay, just a nice juicy mix of neutral tint and some blue. This is just some ultramarine okay, that I'm mixing up here on the side, and I like to use variations of grays and darks. You know, for this one here, I might just go ultramarine, a bit of red and a bit of yellow like that. And then we've got a dark um, here, which I can just add a bit more neutral tint to. So we've got a um, warm kind of gray, and then we've got a cool gray over here, two different ones and um, that we can kind of alternate with and play around with so that it doesn't look all the same. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the cool first, the coolness. Let's drop in a bit here, okay, just to test. And that's looking okay. Um, it does look very, very dark. And this is where we want to be a bit more um, discerning by cutting around shapes. So there's some figures in here. Cutting around those figures. Remember, it's very dark underneath these rooftops. So by um, emphasizing you know, bits and pieces here, leaving out some of the um, shapes behind, even this, that I could indicate a bit of this. I don't know what it is. There is some kind of yellowish pink colored object behind there so i'm going to leave that through um like that i can even cut around leave some little circles here for some uh imaginary bits and pieces running down like that there um cutting around these ones let's and, and you have to be very 
um, I put it very uh, deliberate with your brush strokes here. You just get it in. It looks very dark, but just but believe me, after when we're done, it will make sense. Okay, so there, a bit of darkness there. Okay, this is going to help also to bring out uh, all the light in the other parts of your paintings. In the painting, I mean. so we go uh, in a bit here, a bit of darkness in the rooftop, bit kind of running across like that, bit underneath there. While I, you know, while I can, just uh, tiny bit there. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to explain exactly what I'm doing, but just try to cut around, um, cut around the uh, the lanterns. Um, these are the. I guess they're a, a you know an important feature of what we're doing here. So a bit of that. Let's cut around. There's a figure here. I'm gonna leave a bit of white like that. Um, there, cut around um, here. You know, we're just leaving in some of the lanterns and some of these signs and things, okay? And, um, you know, getting in a bit of that rooftop like that. We're not coloring it all in, okay? It's not all the same color, and you're going to get a nicer looking scene if you keep things sort of buried. So that bit there, I'm going to add a bit more color to. I want to create more contrast with these these two figures here, like that. Um, okay, so just cutting around that, the head of that person, a bit more here. Um, as I move into the background, I'm going to just lighten this a bit more as well. I don't want it to be too dark in the background. Okay, so I've just added a bit of water to my mixture and um, continued, try to just continue on. Okay, so leave a little bit of those the yellow on there as well. That's going to help. Um, you know, we've got some underneath these sections of the rooftops. There, there, there's a bit here. Um, even on the top, there's bits and pieces there. Look, there's a bit of darkness here. Yeah, the, the, I'm using a, a, a lighter wash of this color, which is about a Probably about a quarter paint to three quarters, three quarters water. Okay, so it joins all on. Um, and here's the fun bit. I'm going to get some shadows for the figures on the ground. Um, and I do like using the other side of the paper actually better. Um, I find it's just not mixing as well on this side. I've, I think I've, I mentioned at the start of this um, scene that I was trying to use the back side of this paper to see what happens. Um, and there's definitely some kind of weird artifacts here it's just not drying and um, distributing as, as well as i want the paint to distribute but you know what we'll, we'll go along we'll go along anyway um now we've got a shadow on the ground i'm gonna just um let's see how we can do this just a light sort of area here where we believe the shadow can be um i'm gonna get in the figures the sh the, fi the shadows of the figures as well um like that Running across the scene, like that um, just a yeah, yeah. Join up, just join them up at the legs uh, like that, where yeah, they hit the ground, and um, a line just running towards that left hand side, and that's how you 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 will need to just do these uh, shadows. Look at that one there. That's a that shadow there of that figure. I like that one. Um, I don't know if I can do all of that um, shadow of the building. I think I'll make it more subdued like this. A little bit more subdued. And kind of, it's still there, but not as much as, um, but not as much as the, um, as in the reference. Okay. We can also redo the shadows of the, of the people as well. Just a bit of that building shadow there. It makes sense. Okay. Um, let's put some more shadows on for the figures here to the left. There's a person on the bicycle. Something like this. Oops. More, 
more um, paint. Okay. Oops, too much darkness there on that wheel. Just be like that. Um, these figures coming out of the scene, it's going to be hard to do them. because We can't get that shadow exactly. Um, but we can get all these other ones here in the background. So these figures, believe it or not, are very important um, there. So, you know, well, we've got a bit of this softness in the ground for the other, the shadow of the building. I think I'll have to redo the shadows of these other figures a little bit more um, because that's going to uh, just anchor them, anchor these figures down a little bit more. Another thing that I want to do is get a bit of a shadow running across the figures. Um, so a bit of neutral tint, and I'm just going to drop that in like that. Just a bit of light coming across the top of this person's shirt so that it looks, um, you know, there's a bit of color showing through that, even on that one, because it's got to make sense as well, right? Um, Bit of bit of um, color running through here, okay. Um, kind of the darkness of the building, just casting shadow over the tops of the the shirts of these these figures, okay. That okay, like this. Now this person here is fine. I'll leave them. Um, here we've got a shadow that just runs all across. Side. This is being cast by the um, this roof top here. I'm going to darken that roof top quickly. Actually, I'm going to get in a bit of color. That's all. Um, these signs are also pretty dark. I just want to add a little bit of color to the signs, um, like that. There. Um. Okay, uh, uh, just having a look, just having a look at the chat. Um, v, so uh, thank you for making neutral tints cool and warm. I trust you now that after two weeks on hearing you say go in dark, I've hesitated before and my drawings and people, etc., look like they're floating. <laughs> yeah, but the shadow underneath the figures it anchors them to the ground. So if you don't have the um, where they connect onto the ground, yeah, it's it's something that it took that took me quite a while to to figure out. So um, keep practicing and um, keep practicing and, and don't be afraid to just go in and add a bit of darkness in there where it's required. You know, even after I finish up with these lives afterwards, I kind of go through and darken off bits and pieces that I feel need. Um, just a bit more attention or a bit more darkness in there. It just helps to draw out all the, the lights and things. So here we go. Um, well, there is a shadow here, and I'm cutting around all these other shapes like that. It's a, a sharp shadow running down here. Here we go. And it just becomes part of the um, wall, I suppose, here. So and it's all pretty dark in this section. Um, at the moment, it doesn't quite make sense. I, I think I'll join up this part of the roof like that and underneath here as well so that it um, looks a little bit better. But we want to leave a lot of this area um, in the light because it's just basically what we're implying. Um, so just a bit of, bit of darkness in there. And I think what we'll need is a, you know, a fair bit of darkness over here on that left-hand side, not in all parts, but in in some areas too, just messy, messy bits of, of uh, darkness running through in some areas, like that. Um, that, cutting around, remember to cut around these shapes and bits and pieces in here too. Um, let's have a look. We'll kind of get it quite dark and um, cut around the lanterns as well. I want to just draw out the lanterns more. That's the whole purpose of going in super dark like I am here. Um, defining these lanterns a little bit more. Uh, there, look, that's just, just a circle. A circle. That, um, and Tony says, looks more like hot press finish to the paper you're using. Yeah, this, um, the back of this paper, 
is a lot smoother than the front. So for the next demonstration, I'm just going to use the front of it because um, I'm I'm finding it's just drying very strangely. And um, it's a good lesson for you guys out there who are, um, you know, experimenting around with different watercolor materials as you start painting. It can have just a, a huge effect on the on the final result. So um, if things don't really work out the way you want them to, um, don't ever take it kind of personally. Sometimes um, there's, you know, it takes a while to get used to paper. So make sure that it, uh, you know, used to used to it, different levels of wetness and things like that. So I don't know this this thing looks a bit funny still, but um, you know what? I'm gonna go with it, and I might put in a, a like kind of a a bit of light maybe running in from the side, um, like that, just to again show more of this um the effect of the light coming downwards, um. Just casting some shadows, maybe. There's something about this section that I think needs. I feel like I've gone a bit too overboard there. So I'm just softening this shadow up here. I think soften it a little, that will be better. And maybe a few lines across. You know, sometimes it's just about connecting up things in your painting, and um, it takes a little while to, to sort of realize this, but. Um, I just felt that bit looked really disconnected from the things in the back here. So I've added in, you know, a bit more shadow, a bit more bits and pieces there. And I hope that, I think that looks a bit better. I mean, it's still quite abstract. Okay. And, uh, let's draw in this bicycle. Just a you know, couple of handlebars there, like that. And this can be, a, I don't know, this is the side of a, pillar or something like that. In fact, this here is a pillar too. I, I almost forgot to put it in, but I'll just add in a bit of darkness here on the left, like that. Um, Tony. Um, so Tony Green says, enjoyed watching you create this urban scene, Darren. Unfortunately, I have to shoot off and fix a friend's computer. So we'll look out for the next session. Fantastic. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining, Tony. And um, I'll see you again next time. Uh, v, so V's um, uh, just having a read through yours. Uh, I've not used Hot Press yet and clueless about what is really different other than texture between the two. Um, so basically, Hot Press is a smooth sort of paper, and when when you're using Hot Press, I often find that you get a lot more um, vibrancy in your in your colors so colors appear brighter stronger um, but the way that it dries is, is quite different it forms almost little puddles um, little puddles and things and it dries unevenly if you're not careful whereas I find with textured paper when you're doing things like a, a sky wash like that it dries and it's you know even if you put in some paint it this it uh, spreads nicely and dissipates evenly. But when you do that with hot press, you've got to be very careful. It does um, have a tendency to, uh, the paper warps. And what happens when the paper warps, it creates little areas of dips and little troughs. And that's where um, water can collect. And um, so therefore you get other areas here that dry and then here it's uh, still wet. And so you get these weird bloom effects um, because you've got an area of wetness that just starts to creep into the already uh, almost dry areas. So um, I use hot press paper to do um, portraiture scenes, um, not scenes, just portraiture, because um, essentially it creates, uh, it, you're able to get in a lot of detail with hot press paper. Um, so that's why I use it. But nowadays I find even using a, a medium textured paper for portraits, that's also very sufficient. Um, some people use them for florals as well. So in case you're kind of wondering the different um, the different applications of it. I'm going to try to put in a, a bit more darkness to this leg, this uh, person's leg here. You know, I, I know there's, I don't want to overdo it, but just a bit more darkness there I thought would be nice. And getting it to blend in 
a bit more of the ground as well. And this, even this person's um, the legs here, they should be a little darker. That um, I want to do it for all of them though. Okay, so I'm going to get in a bit more of that darkness running through that section and drawing that up there. Yeah, I'm just over redoing some of these shadows once so that I have uh, a more uh, defined looking shadow. Right? Even for this person's uh, legs, I've just added in a little bit of blue there for the or the what do you call it the legs yeah you can put in a bit of blue here maybe some blue jeans or something that get around and play some fun really look, this is done um i don't have all that much else to do i'm what i'm essentially doing i'm just fiddling around with some of the tones just to create some darker bits of shadow areas of shadow running behind uh you know some of the figures and you know look there's even some here for the this bush for example something like that you can even get in um you know just just uh, playing around with the tones but really uh, there's not all that much that we need to do uh you know you can go in and even put in some in some hair for that a bit of hair for that figure um this is almost a full tone. I've picked up the paint straight from the palette. Bit of bit of hair there. Let's get some neutral tint. Bit of hair. Someone on a bicycle like that. Coming across his face. Um, Natalie is asking, how would you know when to paint? Uh, sorry, when to use cold or warm shadow paint? Um, good question. I tend to uh, so with the ground here i've got a warm color so i find that when you're contrasting a cool color with a warm color um it looks a little bit more interesting when you're uh yeah so that's why i've used a cooler cooler sort of warm color um for the for the shadows i, I tend to work in opposites um but if you want uh you know a less vibrant maybe a more subdued um you know a more subdued situation you'll probably just you know you can use obviously just some um you know if you've got warm ground you can use a warmer sort of shadow tone as well so it's really up to you it's a um more of a personal personal sort of thing but i i do find um yeah when i add in some with uh you know, just the the complementary you know, warm and cool, warm and cool, it looks a lot more interesting. So there's some hair, look at that, this is a bit of hair for this person walking in, you know, something like that, just basic stuff. Just a, a few little marks on the page. Okay, we're pretty much done. Um, you know, afterwards I'll go through and maybe find it a bit, but, um, you know, I, you know, I can do this sort of thing, I'll get it in the some uh, guiding, guiding lines here on the ground. Um, there's not any birds in here. And, and as you know, if you guys have watched my uh, tutorials for some time now, I'm obsessed with putting birds in at the end. Um, I don't know, it's just something about leaving like a, that sky that's completely um, empty. <laughs> I just need to put some in. So I'll get in some very small birds, various um, stages of light. That. here a few up there just a bit of neutral tint um just to break up the sky a little bit and i think we're all right i think we're done so nice little nice little scene very you know obviously simplified a fair bit but um i hope i hope that was helpful um i'm going to start in the second one in just a moment i'm just going to check any of the chats uh so v um you saying that it holds the color or water different from cold press okay yeah i've already i've already answered that question um best way give it a try v um yeah pick up some hot press paper it's uh it, it, it's it's a different experience that's for sure um i can maybe i could find some um i got got a bit of time i'll pull out some at the end 
of my in my cupboard. I think I can find some actually. Use it mainly to paint portraits. I uh, did a portrait of my grandma, which is somewhere in here. So just hang on a little bit. I'm gonna pull it out just to show you. Otherwise, I think I might. I'll probably forget later if I don't sort of go through it now. Um, I don't know where you guys keep all your um, watercolor paintings when you finish with them, but I keep I keep all of mine in a little uh, not a little like a, a, a portfolio kind of thing. It's just a bag that has all the, the paintings that I've done. Um, so I'm going through that at the moment just to find some examples of hot press paper press paper that I've used. I've done some kind of, I mainly use it for portraits, guys. Uh, mainly use it for portraits. So these are kind of older ones of friends and of some celebrities and things like that, which I've drawn in the past. Where is it? Okay. I had one of my grandmother, but I can't really find that. Um, just put the put this under. So that's that. There is uh, hot press, and um, you know, as as you can see, you get a lot more detail. You bits and pieces. So it's all it's all hot press, um, hot press paper. Um, to get this effect took me ages because it, parts of it just dry, um, dry a little bit funny. So I've always got to just be touching around the paper, but you can get a lot more. Kind of um, a lot more kind of details in there. I don't really do as much portraiture and stuff anymore. Um, you might recognize some of these from um, movies and things like that. Uh, just just can't find that one, but I do have one of my grandmother somewhere which I really like, but I can't find it. I'm gonna try just looking through it one more time, and if I can't find it, we're just gonna start on the next one. Um, feel free to answer any questions, uh, ask any questions as well. Um, yeah, that's, this is, this is the one. So, um, yeah, the Saunders Waterford smooth paper, it tends to dry a little bit better, but, um, yeah, you can get sort of sharper little effects, sharper little effects like that. So I don't think I've really got one where I've done, probably this is the closest that I've got. That's kind of a smoother, smoother sort of paper. And, um, you, you know, you can't really tell, but that's dried a little bit funny here because it's smoother. So um, just more likely enough with sort of bloom areas and things like that. So you just got to work and um, really just accept it if, if that happens. So I'm going to continue on now. I think I've, I think I've been a bit sidetracked, guys. Yeah, sorry, being a bit sidetracked. I uh, sometimes, sometimes I forget what I'm... I'm up to. Um, so we're going to get on with uh, the second one. I'll put this away. Um, I'll give it a quick dry first, actually, so I can close the book. So let's uh, open up a new sheet of paper. Let's use this side again. Um, this over a bit. For the second scene, what are we going to do? Let me just hang on. There we go little scene here of Egypt. Um, I'm not sure where this is, guys. It might be Cairo or somewhere else, uh, somewhere else in Egypt. But I thought this was a pretty cool sort of scene to do, something a little, something a little different. Um, and also uh, a kind of exercise in painting figures, drawing figures. Um, there's a camel here. We'll see how, 
see how I end up tackling this one. Um, I don't draw animals all that often, but like everything else, you can separate them down into little shapes. Um, the pyramids, I think I'm going to move that pyramid as well. It just, I want the whole pyramid in, so I might kind of migrate it over to the right hand side a little bit. Um, you have a little check of the comments. Um, so Yvonne's saying that uh, she's got some of each, so um, so each paper. So you've got some of the hot press and the cold press paper, but haven't tried the hot press. Trying to find, I'm trying a couple of different brands, but mostly use uh, Arsh, Arshes. So, um, great. Uh, yeah, I've only used... I've only used Saunders Waterford Smooth. That's about it, which is which is hot press, and it's it's interesting if you compare that to some of the other brands. Saunders Waterford Smooth still has a slight grain to the paper if you look at look at it under light, so it's not completely smooth. Um, Yvonne, uh, so uh, V says, yeah, Yvonne sounds like it's time to try it too. Inherited my mother's art stuff. Awesome. Um, there's probably a lot of a lot of goodies in there, V. So um, yeah. Nikki, um, good morning. Good morning, all. Yes, an Egypt scene. <laughs> yeah, something different, hey? Um, one thing I really love about this, this scene is that you've got this contrast with the um, lovely blue sky, and then you've got this sandy sort of color here, and we're going to exaggerate the shadows and um, these figures and and uh, give this a go. Okay, so um, haven't tried any of these scenes before guys so um hopefully this works out I'm, i think i'm confident it will turn out okay um so let me just get started um for those of you watching on facebook um you know let me know how you're going as well and if you need any help um good to see a bit of um some bit, bit of um a bit of chatter around in in um in youtube helping each other out so Let's go, let's start this one. Um, it's a lot of stuff in here. Don't all these rocks, but we have the main thing, we've just got this pyramid and we've got the, um, the camel and a couple of these guys here, someone on top of the camel, more in the distance. So I will just separate this scene roughly about just below halfway, halfway point, so we're about here. Okay, I'm using the side of the pen again um, to get in this line, just a little section of that line like that. Okay, there we go, that's all. Just need a little indication of where that horizon line is. Um, so, what we're gonna do, um, how will we do this, in fact? Um, now, the, the vantage point that we're looking from is um, we're looking downwards because we can tell the figures, their heads are below the horizon line. So whoever's taking this photo, they're standing um, pretty much almost the same height as the camel. Um, as If you look at the camel's, the camel's heads, they're kind of just on the horizon line. So I've got a couple of ch choices here, really. You can draw it from the perspective of the person, or you can draw it... Um, you know, trying to imagine yourself further down and place the the people's heads, um, you place the people's heads up on the horizon line, but that requires a little bit of a little bit of um, finessing and playing around. So we'll start off with the camel. Okay, I think I'll just try to copy this scene, um, the general perspective of this scene, and uh, the camel is kind of in the middle of the scene, and I don't know if I really want that camel right there, but Maybe we'll put the camel here, okay? The head, sort of around here. Again, I'm not the best at drawing these. I haven't really drawn too many of them before, but the head is kind of like this, let's look at it. It's kind of like an oval shape like that. We've got a bit of an ear coming out the back there, a um, bit of the mouth there. I'm gonna zoom into this reference picture. It's a really funny looking thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nose and um, kind of an eye here, just a bit of darkness there for the eye, like that. Um, there's a lot going on in, even just in the head, um, the bottom of the jaw, and then we've got um, the neck. I'm just going to zoom out of the reference a bit, okay? And um, let's bring the neck down, and it just goes vertical. Um, and I'm using the side of the, the pen because I don't want to um, get in all the detail just yet. I, I want to start putting in... Uh, a bit of the figure, so there's a figure here, 
Um, there we go. Get in the figure. Let's just get in the head of this this camel. Almost, it looks like a dragon or something like that. Okay. Um, a couple of legs like that. Um, and we'll, we'll simplify the body of this fella down. Head heads all around here, and he's got um kind of a, a wrap around his head like that too. And it kind of just goes around the side like that, but he's looking downwards. Um, it's kind of looking downwards in, in there. And uh, we've got um, just the sides of his, uh, you know, the robe that he's wearing. Um, hot out there. And um, darkness in here. We've got a bit of the light coming from the top left, casting that shadow. Still think this looks like a dragon rather than a, and a camel, but we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, see how we go. Uh, there is the rain here. Um, let me have a look a little bit closer. There. Um, yeah, let's have a look. There is uh, kind of bits and pieces. Uh, I don't want to. want to overdo it. Okay. Okay, I'll probably have to um, play around with the watercolors. The thing is, is when you even if you stuff up the drawing, or if you haven't got the drawing in exactly, you can still go in with the watercolors and um, flesh out some some details and those shapes a bit better. But um, generally, the shape of the head is okay. It's just um, looks more like a I said before, looks like a dragon or something like that. So. Um, Knee coming up like this there, and uh, underneath him he's got um, this kind of look. The, the neck sort of comes into the body like that, and then we've got one of these areas of legs that runs down. Um, and I think it was I think it was Salvador Dali that was in his work. He's got a lot of got a lot of camels with with ridiculously long legs. I don't know. It might be. Um, uh, I might be confused, but I'm pretty sure it's that. I'm pretty sure he had like a lot of those kind of stilts and things like that. He was obsessed with that in his work. Um, there's a leg, okay? And, and, and how I'm sort of looking at it as well, I'm measuring the leg. So the length of the leg is roughly around the length of um, the camel from that the, where it stops, where the legs stop, and then the top of the head. So that's where, where I'm kind of trying to get it to, to end. There, there is someone here, a uh, fella here that's like touching the side of the camel. Uh, but I'll get in some of these cloths and things here as well on the side. But he does have his hand um, kind of on the side there like that. And uh, part of his robe there through the head like this. There, he's wearing... Uh, and the collar of his shirt. Arm kind of outstretched and coming down towards his side, kind of like hands on his side there. And then we've got um, chest, the entire length of his body. Just a bit of this, a bit of this going on. Okay, I think, I don't know if this is kind of, I've about overdone it a bit, but we'll, We'll make do, make do. Um, of course, so sort of kind of put a rock here uh, in the way that catch in a bit of darkness behind. Um, I love using these rocks as well as kind of compositional aids. Um, you know, we've got some shadows and things that are like maybe uh, gonna go over to the left there. And uh, notice I haven't really lifted my pen off the paper all that much um, for these for this part. Um, there we go. And this side here, let's get in. Uh, we're just kind of sitting on this edge. Uh, that, oops, uh, that there. It kind of connects onto another camel here in the background. There, uh, leg here in the back. There's a leg coming down here. See, it comes out to the back. 
that and then it moves kind of forward like this um something like this okay and then the other one just i don't have enough room for it it's behind behind so there we go yeah there's something there a little bit of something um Let's uh, put in this fella here, head around the same height as well. So get that head in there and um, what he's wearing too. And um, the collar of his shirt will go around. And he's kind of standing here with his hands kind of joined together, um, doing something like that. I think he's holding a cigarette. So. Yeah, that. Yeah, um, I'm not taking my hand off the. Oh, I am a little bit, but I'm trying to just create this larger shape, just a shape of a figure. There we go. Yeah, and not try to keep it fluid. There's a there's a foot, and there's a foot here facing forward. So there we go. It's not perfect. But it definitely looks like a person. Um, you're wearing sunglasses too. So we can get in sunglasses and a bit of his nose. I'm just looking. So this one's a bit more detailed than the others. Okay. Um, so there we go. We've got a bit of indication of what, what is happening in here. So um Let's get in this other the other camel here. This one's kind of like facing towards you know, the eyes, a little bit of eyes, and maybe the ears, a little ear there, um, there, and uh, the neck coming down and uh, sort of disappearing around here. There's a section here where the kind of rider sits. There we go. And uh, this bit of cloth or what have you hangs down over the sides. That should probably have a bit more stuff coming off it. Like that. Um, like that. There we go. Um, I don't know if I should put someone on top there. We can, I might, I might do it. Just put someone on, on, on top for consistency, I suppose. Um, here we go. So sitting on top similar as uh, this other person here in the front but we don't have to detail all that much okay because things in the background remember they're just um they're going to be out of sight they're going to be um a little bit lighter and things in the front that's a, a sort of technique i use to push um bits back and bring other bits forward so here i'm even just tightening up these lines, darkening them up more, um, defining the lines more. I don't really like doing this all that much um, because sometimes you can overwork it. But I, I want to bring this, uh, this camel sort of forwards a bit more. Okay, um, There we go. You know, this one, this guy looks okay. Uh, have a look. Some more rocks and things here. Okay, Here's another rock. I'm drawing a square or a sort of shape, and then I'm putting a bit of darkness here on that left hand side, like this. All right? And that's going to just imply some bits and pieces here. Okay? And a big kind of pile of rubble. How, how's everyone going? How are you doing with the drawing? Um, how are you finding it at the moment? Are you struggling um you're having fun let me know I'm definitely enjoying this i'm like i've never done some a scene like this before and it's again it's challenging me could stuff it up could stuff it up still but um kind of like what i was saying before uh once you kind of you you, you figure out what i'm talking about in terms of simplifying shapes down you know drawing people as and even like the animal and separating out um the camel into smaller shapes uh it makes it so much easier to draw there we go we're going to connect down like this and we're going to get the legs there's one leg here and it comes down like that this forward. and what we've got another one here there 
knobby sort of knee there there we go um bit of this side like that um kind of flares out to the back and then comes forwards this there and um another one there with that okay so you've got a bit more on the back that okay so there we go we've got another one um bit of a bit of hatching as well underneath some of these areas of the legs i want to get in a bit more detail for the, uh, the shadows i suppose a bit of darkness running underneath you can always save this for later too um these rocks i'm really enjoying doing these rocks i don't know why um kind of therapeutic okay and let me just see how we are all doing um fantastic um just shift this reference picture i can't really see it properly photo uh, how are you doing let me know let me know in the, in the comments still watching along even the even the um the clothing of these uh, these guys they're actually kind of darker left hand side we might exaggerate that a bit okay um v uh v saying struggling with the camel's heads badly yeah i i was struggling to um i suggest if you're watching along at home just to zoom in zoom into that head and uh and and uh work on that a little bit closer i think this it's more kind of bulbous coming out like that um yeah it's an interesting shape <laughs> uh but look it's um it's 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 something that we can still alter and um, fix up a little bit later on as well as we go into the paints. It's always good. Try things. Try something different. Um, yeah, try something a little bit different and, um, you know, things that you don't usually paint raw. And um, sometimes you surprise. You surprise yourself because you, you come up with something that you... Um, you might like to to draw a subject that you might like to draw but you know like i was saying before we always tend to stick with things that we are comfortable with but um there's such a payoff when you're doing things that make you uncomfortable uh, well not all things but in the context of in the context of art um you know especially if you're just starting out as a beginner um and and myself i've i've so much learn i've so much left to learn i don't think i'll ever stop learning um kind of hooves those like that um great 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 uh yvonne yvonne saying um excited to try it but a little concerned when you said it is it kind of challenges you <laughs> yeah yeah um challenge is a good thing challenge is a good thing you on um it's it's uh it's tr it's tricky it's tricky but um you know i quite like this i've never drawn anything like this before um but you know using the same principles like i mentioned uh, just breaking things down look at the head the head is kind of like it's it's basically oval it's basically an oval attached to this sort of cylindrical thing for the neck um oval then it's kind of kind of bulged out a bit on top so you you have to simplify things down um you know this guy's kind of like got a circular type of hat the body is a bit of like a rectangular shape um you know this one as well like a rectangle with a bit of squiggly lines and a rounder um thing for his for his head like that so you 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 learn and and you and you train your yourself to recognize uh, the objects to just look at it as uh, objects rather than um, rather than anything in particular. Even these rocks. Look, I'm trying to make them all random, but um, you know I, I tend to also repeat the same shape. So we can put in it's a round sort of one and here as well like that. 
let's have a look at the reference are there any different rocks that i could potentially add in there are some uh, so i haven't looked at them but there are these round kind of oval shaped rocks as well that um that are in this gigantic pile i don't know what these rocks are here for um has anyone out there has anyone out there been to egypt by the way and if you have uh, what was your experience and um would you recommend would you recommend um you know me checking out some of these areas um later on in egypt um i've heard of cairo i really want to go someday because it just seems so different there and it's such a rich kind of history and you know i heard egypt these days is a bit of a um you know they're struggling a bit and it, it's it, it seems to be a common theme in history every civilization tends to have its have its day um you know at one point it was the greeks it was the chinese then it was um uh you know it was the egyptians way before that. um and what did you have you had the uh the first of like you know the, the babylonians in um mesopotamia so let's have a look mona mona's saying don't have time to write it is difficult yes yeah um it is difficult and uh you're doing well you're doing well to to follow along and um give it a try um it, think of it as you're drawing shapes and um and the shapes if you, if you if you draw shapes it'll end up looking like whatever it is if you reduce it down okay especially when you put in the paint afterwards and shadows and things will make it look like make it a bit more sense marianne levy says yes i've been a long time ago and i loved it oh um whereabouts did you go did you go to um cairo did you see like the uh the, the great pyramids the uh, valley of the valley of the kings the valley of the kings i think um yeah it would be amazing quite jelly Lindsay, Lindsay says faces are so hard i have to apologize to the people in these pictures for my renditions sorry people <laughs> uh, um look faces as well is something that i really just try to simplify uh simplify down the main thing with these pen figures um try to get in the nose a bit of shadow for the eyes um, just a bit of scratching in for, for the eyes and, a, and a, a quick line or a dot with another dot underneath for the for the mouth. I mean, even for these ones, I haven't bothered. I haven't bothered to put in, put in the the um, the uh, the detail for that figure here. So um, yeah, good that you're a gamer, Lindsay. Uh, and V says, shocked as I can draw horses, zebras, and donkeys, easy enough. Camels are nothing like them. Yeah, they're, uh, I, I'm not the best at horses or, or animals, but um, I have, you know, I have drawn them at, you know, times of the past. They, I find it so um, tricky at the proportions of each animal you have to you have to be pretty accurate otherwise your camel can start looking like a dog or like a um if you make the you know if you make the legs too short it will start looking like a i don't know it definitely look like a dog or something like that and the neck as well um i think the neck really does it for like the camels i mean that one thing i like um marianne so she says uh, marianne's been to cairo as one luxor valley of the kings and abu Simbel, awesome. Um, I'm only familiar. I've only heard of a couple of those, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit of a read up, a little bit of a read up about it. Uh, you know, one day, one day when we can travel again, you know, here over in Melbourne, would love to go over there. There's, there's, uh, uh, the Galapagos Island is uh, Galapagos Islands. That's another one on my sort of wish list that I want to check out. Um, I think it's one of the most biodiverse places on the planet, um, apart from the the rainforests in the in South America. But um, yeah, the, you know, I, one of the great things is like uh, I, you know, I always bring a sketchbook along, and I and I find art um, just a great sort of way to document uh, having some kind of visual journal. 
essentially of um, of your travels and of your experiences it helps to sort of solidify those those memories. Um, now I have got a third one, um, a third camel over in the back, and uh, why not? Why not put one last camel in? Uh, just a very basic one over in the distance. You can barely see it. There's a person sitting on top. Um, you can't, you almost can't see, but uh, the neck. Great thing though is that you don't have to put much detail in the ones here in the background, guys. So the legs, you know, sort of splay out. We've got one leg kind of here, another leg, oops, kind of coming out like that. Um, it's just uh, indicative kind of work for the stuff in the background. It's um, doesn't look much like a camel, but uh, reducing levels of complexity. And, you know, we've also got a few people here standing up on the horizon line, because remember, this is not a, uh, it's, it, it's it, the, the ground is continually kind of undulating. There's all kinds of sand and things and little hills and that sort of thing up here on the sand. So you're going to have shifting areas of, uh, yeah, the just basically shifting heights of, of sand and areas. So let's, you know, I'm just putting in a few little bits and pieces. Like if someone here just sitting down behind a rock, even like that, uh, just a crowd of people. Well, it doesn't really feel like much. And if you even zoom into the photo after you finish this, um, you can go back. There's even a little peak of camels and people off in the distance. Uh, now, do I want to add another one, another person here? You know what, I think I, I will, but before I do, let's put in this pyramid now. We'll stop it about here. Um, I haven't planned this out. I'm just going to try uh, to do this because I, I don't want it. I want it to still be in the in the scene. So triangle, guys, it's just a triangle. Okay, Just get that triangle in and maybe we have it finish. Um, me thinking what to do here. We'll have it finished kind of around here, maybe cutting through the camel a bit like that. Um, but I'm also going to make it more three dimensional. I'm going to add a side to it um, that comes down. Let's let's just give this a shot. Yeah, may or may not work out, but um, I'm going to put it in there anyway. That's an, the side of the uh, the pyramid. Like that. Um, how will we do this? So, um, let me just have a quick little look on what we might be able to do. I think a few little lines like this. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's do these ones first. Some lines cutting across, and you do these lines real quickly. I'm just um, holding that pen right at the end. Okay, to get these in lines like that there there um fantastic and let's have a look this side of the pyramid i'm just going to some other lines i'm kind of coming off in that direction like this okay something like that um and I think that's pretty much about it. I mean, there are um, a few more things in there. Probably if I were to give this a shot again, I would have used a smaller nibbed pen okay, just to push it back further, but um, it's not bad. It still works, it still works fine here. Um, only thing is this area now looks really quite um, bare and you know we've got some rocks and things here, which I will, uh, you know, emphasize, you know that there are kind of um, some poles and things, like in the other reference picture I had, there were some bits and pieces of poles. I don't know what exactly they were, they, they were but they were kind of sticking up, uh, maybe marking the side of a road or something over on that side. But we need a bit of this stuff going on in here. Also, um, I'm going to put in a figure here. And the reason why is because I just want some... Uh, just a little bit of 
um, a little bit of depth, a little feeling of depth, because we've got these figures here, right? Um, I might put in another one, put in someone here. Let's put in someone sort of walking towards uh, into the scene like that there. And uh, a bit of that flowy sort of um, hair that he's got on. And let's put there, you know, that. Um, no, it's very loose. Um, I'll get in another person here we'll kind of copy that one a bit okay but i'll turn get it to turn like this way a little bit turn his head a little bit towards that right hand side um again a bit of scratching away at the face there uh look at that maybe arms coming down like that and the rest of it just uh will copy the other one the guy okay here we go yeah. Darken at the bottom like this. Um, this way we have a sort of a, a combination of people walking, you know, person walking in there. Always kind of um, trying to figure out a way to um change it up and cr and make it more interesting i think another one in here maybe like just walking again just in the same gear that just kind of walking towards the left so i know it's so um, vague here in the background but you need something in there okay there's some little rocks and these rocks are important because they kind of connect up um they connect up the the stuff here in the foreground as well. Okay, just rocks and things here in the ground, uh, bits and pieces. Just space them kind of unevenly. They're not all in the same spots, and they don't look uh, they don't look all the same as well. So, um, you know, we can even add another person here. Just so so general, right? So general, but um, what we need just a bit of popping these guys there like that, walking hand arm there, there could be arm a hand like that. Oops, this. Okay, this is this is all right. Um, I think we've got enough detail in here. The only other thing I might think about is we could put in a a bit of like a mount like a area of, of sand here in the background like a distant distant sort of mountainous area running towards the back um like that just very lightly using the edge of the pen just very lightly okay there we go all right um Good. I'm, I'm kind of happy with how this looks. Uh, there's probably a few other things I could do, like add more rocks, all that sort of thing. Um, but I'm going to just get started on it. Um, how are we all doing in the in the chats? Uh, who's watching along, and how are you? Um, how are you going with your with your drawing? Um, let me know. Um, but we're going to get started with the painting. Um, let me know if you've got questions as well, if, you, if you're struggling with the sort of drawing, um, drawing anything as well. Uh, yeah, quick look at the chats. Nothing new. Um, so let's get started with some colors. Let's add some colors in here. Uh, now, Reference picture, and bring that up. It's really a lot of yellows in here, lots of yellows, some whites, some cool colors on the people. Um, but we'll firstly start off. I'm going to use a large round brush. This is a this is a, a number ten round brush. I'm going to use some sandy sort of color. This is Naples yellow okay, for the for the um, for the ground. Naples yellow like that. 
Okay. The only thing I want you to, to try cut around a bit is the figures so that we can deal with the figures a bit later. Um, it's easier to, I find, color them in um, and get the, you know, if we want to get some cooler colors, slightly cool white sort of color running through them, um, just makes it easier if we cut around. Okay, so I'm just having a look at that. That's probably, probably could do with some more yellow, uh, yellow ochre. So I've got yellow ochre, drop that in as well. Just mix that with that Naples yellow. Um, if you don't have Naples yellow, just use a uh, lemon yellow. And if you've got some gouache, mix, um, mix that lemon yellow with a bit of gouache. Okay. That's going to help you to, uh, that's going to help you to get basically a, 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 um, you call it an opaque kind of creamy sort of yellow. So just a bit of that cutting around. We've got a lot of this, a lot of this going on in here. Um, even in the pyramids, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of yellow oakery with a bit of that other Naples yellow as well. So let's go in, let's get in that pyramid quickly. Okay. Yellow ochre. That in just real fast. Um, no, gone into the area of which is kind of the sky, but we will make do. Um, the camel's also the same kind of color, so I'm not going to get too obsessed with um, the exact color there. But going over the top of it's fine, just like that. Even with the rocks, a bit of Naples yellow, just drop some of that color in there. Okay, a warm color. Just think of things as a warm or cool warmth. Here, okay. Um, ooh, cutting around here for the background. Um, but we're going over these rocks quickly. Um, you notice how quick the painting is compared to the actual drawing. The line and wash find a lot of the, the detail. Uh, a lot of the work is actually in the drawing, and um, you can get away with having a. Um, you can get away with having a. A um, average painting with line and wash, but you can't get away having an average, uh, not average, but um, you know, you've got to get the main details in, okay? Because this is going to show through in the end. It all shows, it all shows through in line and wash. A bit more of that orangey color there, the camels, whatever they've got on them, um, and we can add in more bits and pieces later on too um so let's again i'm going to just start putting a bit of color here yeah um the camels it's not a huge deal just a warm color is will be sufficient that okay great and a bit of that background sort of uh, whatever you call it the um little hill kind of areas in the background there i put in a little bit of grayish color too kind of like a cooler gray color i don't know if that will work um but i i, I just feel like it needs to be it needs to, you need to just add a bit of color in there now the sky cerulean blue just going to be using cerulean blue a uh, thin wash of it as well we want it to be very light cerulean blue tends to uh mix into green very easily if you so just be careful that with the colors that you're using um you clean your brush pretty quickly so that you don't get as much mixing you're going to get some of it see here it's actually i've let it mix into the pyramids a bit okay a bit of mixes mixing is fine but i don't want the sky to be green and that was a that was definitely a thing that i struggled with in the beginning just painting everything accidentally painting everything green of that cut around this figure here yeah that 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 just like that that this might be a bit too much concentration of blue but it'll be all right we'll try off a bit lighter just make sure you keep it very very watery in this mix that will be, you know a quarter paint or less than a quarter paint you, you know and lots of water Okay. All right, looking good. Um, so I'm going to give this a real quick dry off. And um, actually, before we do that, 
before we do that, I'm going to get in a bit of paint for the figures, a little bit of paint. Okay, so um, almost forgot about them. This one has a grayish kind of color uh, for the clothes um, he's wearing. So I'm going to put in a bit of that gray like this. Um, and then on the camel as well, there's a bit of darkness kind of running to the left, which I'm going to emphasize even now um, because we're going to have to layer over the top to get a bit more, a little bit more of that color out actually. So um, there we go, just some darkness on the camel like that. Um, especially in that leg here in the background, tiny bit of darkness there, like that. The legs sort of come into the ground there. Okay. Um, figures add a bit of cooler gray color, a bit more blue in that gray. Cooler gray color. Just drop a bit of that in. I'm just testing because I don't want it to be overpowering. Oops, so that's too sort of ish connected with it. More with that gray. Someone here, a bit of that gray on that person. Um, let's have a look at these. These two here. A bit of gray here on their clothes. But remember to leave some of that white because that's going to indicate the the light source coming from that right hand side. So, so often what you leave out that makes a huge difference in watercolors. And um, here we go, people there. And that, okay. On these two as well. Um, here the, on the camel here, just some darkness on the legs. Some. Uh, a little bit more color, a bit more darkness on the legs. Okay. Um, ooh, now that the pyramid is actually going to be a fair bit darker once we go through it later. Um, I don't think I even need to bring out the hairdryer. We should be good. We start with the pyramid now. Um, we should be good. So I'm mixing up a Let's go with the kind of warmer gray color. So if you've got your three primaries, um, mix up your three primaries. We've got some neutral tint, grab some neutral tint and just mix some red in there. Okay, we're gonna kind of darker sort of neutral color. I'm gonna go in there just like that. Let's, um, let's get in a bit of that, okay? Kind of in the darkness. Yeah. But I, I hope to get some, oops. I hope to get some little sparkles also running through. So check this out. See that bit of dry brush and we've got some of that texture? That's exactly what I'm trying to, to, to bring out a bit. I don't want to color the whole thing in exactly because it's going to look too um, flat. Okay, so. You know, there's even, you know, I can, we can make a, a bit of a shadow or something like that for bits and pieces. The shadows on this scene are very subtle uh, for the little rocks and things like that. So you can pick up this little, um, little brush that I've got here. Look, maybe you can dry brush some of this stuff on that side as well. It's completely, going to be completely that color. Um, I can always darken that pyramid later if it's too much, too little, I mean. Um, here we go, just picking up some of this darker paint like that. And we're going to now get in some dark shadows, guys. Dark shadows. Um, this is a mixture of about three quarters paint and one quarter water. So it's pretty, it's still fairly thick kind of paint. And, um, you know, in the actual reference, Photo, the shadows are quite light. Um, I want to try making them a bit darker and um, adding a bit more. Um, let's get a bit of this. Get a bit of this um, burnt sienna. Some bit of uh, bit of skin tone in that. Just a little dab. Look at that. Just a little dab. I'm not even. 
concerned about um, details. Who dab? Wait, here we go. And I'm sure this fella. Okay. It's dark color that we've mixed up before. Make sure it's dark enough but still transparent. And the shadows. I love these shadows. They're really interesting. We've got. I think we'll get this one kind of running, we'll do the camel first, kind of running across here like that. There, even this figure here, joining up and, and coming out of the whole scene like that. Okay, that's about the best I can do, unfortunately. I um fortunately the uh I've drawn that camel a little too far down, so I can't get all too much of that shadow in. But make sure they're all running in the same direction, guys. One, two, and this joins up like this, like that. Um, something simple. Like this. Join the legs up. There. Mm. One as well. There. Doesn't have to be complicated at all. Just a line, really. Um, pull it in like that, and and don't touch it after you've gone into it. Just leave it. Let it. Let it, um, it uh, continue on. You know, even these rocks, you could get them to cast a bit of that shadow as well. Especially while they're wet, it'd be nice to get in a bit of wet on wet, um, dark parts in here. Two. Speeds up that process. I'm not bringing out that hair dryer. this part. Just some darkness in these rocks. In some areas, um, but these people here, so we can just get in a little shadow again running off into the distance. Like that quick and sporadic stuff there, even the rocks they will form a bit of a shadow, a tiny little shadow as well. Um, it will make a lot of a uh, quite, quite a big difference these shadows, especially because we don't have uh, a lot of darks in here. Most of the darks are basically of, of the shadows and some of the legs of the camels. Um, areas which I'm emphasizing, okay, even in here, darken up, just a neutral tint, a neutral tint in there. Leg here at the back, um, got the neck of the camel here, the head as well. Just looking at some areas, a bit of the ear, like that. Um, got in this. I still want there to be a little bit of light. Okay. Um, Fantastic. So this is looking all right. Um, and uh, oh, one thing we've forgotten is these the camels, the shadows of these ones, uh, this one here in the back. So just a little one like that joining up. Um, this one here can okay, moving forwards like that. Just little shadows. Some of these people um, just always forget to do a few here and there. That's a bit of purple. I'm gonna put a bit of purple and, and color in um just on this area of the camel so we can get in some um just some little details of the decorations and things. Oops. There. There. Bit more darkness on the figure there to the left um even darkens this figure a little more now that we're a bit more aware of um the, i guess the light and dark sections of the painting we can exaggerate uh, bring this out more because we've got the darkest part in which is basically the shadows um a bit of dry brush onto the pyramid as well a little bit of dry brush I'm just taking this um, brush turning it on its side after drying it a little bit 
I'm just dragging that through. Okay, we're gonna also get in a little bit of this stuff on the ground. This is, uh, you know, rocks and things. Keep sort of drag it around to create sort of scratchy, scratchiness here in the ground. Just the side of the brush. Quick way to do it. Um, hope it works out. Yeah, just putting in, dropping in a little more of this paint by using the side of the brush. That, and that helps to indicate uh, texture. Okay, there might even be a bit of burnt sienna in there, um, which I can just put in very quickly. Um, We want things to join a bit. We don't want everything to be, especially these pyramids. I don't want them to be all separate and um, away from the, you know, the ground. It sort of joins on a little bit like we're doing here. Okay, here we go. Bit of color. Um, I think we're for a little sketch like this. We're pretty much, pretty much done. I mean, the only thing, only thing that I might do later is go in. Um, yeah, basically just go in uh, a bit more color, put in some more highlights and um, fun little bits and pieces uh, in areas. But um, it's a really quick, quick little sketch. I mean, also what you can do is um, you can do things like add in more detail for these uh, pyramids, so like little blocks and things you can put in here well it's up to you so um, i know i've kind of drawn uh, bits of very simplified version but there are a lot of little blocks and things that you can pick out a few here and there and just like bring it out like this for example okay. looks a bit too much just um dry off that area move it around a bit um okay. Oops. Pick over the top there. Um so I, I think I'm almost done really with, with this one. Um so hope you hope you all doing Okay, and let me know. Um, let let me know how you're how you're progressing along. If uh, um, you're needing any help, or if you're just working away, working away pretty hard at the moment. Um, you know, the great thing about watercolors is that you can always continue to layer, um, add in more and more details as you as you see fit. So, um, I'm doing smaller brush. Um, so we're pretty much done. So I'll go through later, and I'm gonna tidy it up a, a little bit. But um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'll hang around for uh, I'll hang around for for a little bit. Um, to answer them, I think this one turned out okay. Um, the pyramid at the back just looks too. I I think it just looks a bit too um too obvious, and uh, probably would have um probably would have done it with a with a thinner liner next time round. Um, but I didn't mind these figures. I like these figures, and for a first go, first little sketch, didn't, uh, didn't mind that. So. Um, let's have a look. I think, I think we're pretty much done. Um, no comments. Uh, so what what I'll do is uh, just finish this one off. So if anyone has questions and things um, like that, um, feel free to leave them in the comments later as well if you're watching along later. Uh, v saying no birds in the sky. Uh, you know why not? Let's put some. Let's put some in. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there are really birds around that this sort of area, but um, I suppose there would be. Wouldn't? There's birds everywhere. So 
good in a few. Like, um, it's just something about that pyramid. I, I think later on I'm going to change it up a bit. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but there's just it's too obvious. I would have next, you know, for for the next time I'd probably make it smaller um, and more more kind of in the distance this is um a bit too obvious a little bit too obvious so but you know you live you live and you learn um thank you everyone for for coming along and um i hope you had fun and i hope you picked up a few few sort of sort of tips um different kind of scenes stuff that uh you know i haven't done before and you know like i said um the worst that can happen is that you try it out and it doesn't work so it's always a good idea i think with this first one i really liked um this area here with this, this contrast with the lanterns and this darkness this uh, person with the blue shirt um I, I really like those shadows um on here i think it's probably too dark in that section um that's the only thing i probably i would have changed is just lightened up that that a little bit more um this one here turned out turned out all right so uh, the only thing i didn't really like about it was probably this the pyramids just to, just kind of too obvious there <laughs> smack bang in the middle um so it just goes to show a lot of the times you get reference photos and um a lot of the times you get reference photos and you have to alter them up and change them a bit um the composition because they work very well as photographs but when you paint them you realize that uh it's just something it just lacks a certain um a certain feel or elements um that the camera can pick up but as a painting it you know doesn't quite work as well so it's a good good uh, kind of learning lesson um great and uh mona thanks for this i'll be Painting at least um, an hour still. They're not ready yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. Just, um, you know, the, the painting's ready when you say it's ready and finished. So just, um, uh, it's up to you, really. Like, I afterwards, I tend to go through and, and try to, you know, pick out highlights. I'll get a bit of white gouache and put some highlights back in areas, rework other areas, too. So um thank you all for coming along and um and b saying i learned so much again thank you so much um it was worth getting ready uh sorry it was was getting up so early for today's session uh, i really appreciate you being here v it's uh it's it's so early so um you know i really want to make sure that i'm giving you as much help as possible because um i feel bad that you have to wake up so early but uh, i'm glad also that you've learned you learned from it uh, you've learned a few things um so um i think that's about it guys um thank you for coming along we also have got a session this saturday so if you haven't had a look at that that event have a look and it's uh it's geez what time is it on it's uh so 10 30 a.m melbourne time um so you have to convert that or facebook kind of does that for you anyway um, and I'll be I'll be drawing and painting a couple of different scenes. I think of Mykonos and oh, where's the other one? France, yeah, uh, a street scene. So another Inktober special because it's uh oh you know I draw and draw and pen and and uh, ink anyway, but thought I just slapped the uh, Inktober on it. Some interest. So um yeah, I've got a website. You can check out the website watercolormental.com. Also got a you, know, you can follow me on Instagram and that sort of stuff as well if you want to see all the other paintings I do and some of the finished products. Um, I, I put up, you know, I also add a few tips, like written tips, um, bonus tips and things that I, you know, when I'm going, I'm posting and thinking maybe there's something here that I learned from it that I could share with everyone. I sort of add that to the post as well. So, um, yeah, let me um, know if you're watching along. Uh, have questions again just post uh, uh, comments and uh, hope to see you next time so Marianne Marianne Levy thank you very much I enjoyed tonight righto um, thanks everyone I will catch you on Saturday if you're available <laughs>